Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson is better known these days simply as Admiral Nelson. He was an inspirational leader of the British Royal Navy. Nelson's grasp of strategy and unusual battle tactics secured several British naval victories, particularly during the Napoleonic Wars. He's widely considered one of the greatest naval commanders in history. However, one of the finest British officers would sadly meet his demise at the Battle of Trafalgar despite the British victory. His quote prior to the Battle of England expects that every man will do his duty is widely requoted and paraphrased over 200 years later. I'm Josh. And I'm Dave of Nerd and Dragon. And today we are looking at Admiral Nelson and the Battle of Trafalgar. On October 20th, 1805, the 33 ships that made up the Franco-Spanish fleet under Pierre Villeneuve and Federico Gravino were spotted sailing out of Cadiz by British scouts. Villeneuve had received orders to leave Cadiz and land troops at Naples to support the French campaign in southern Italy. They had hoped to sail into the Mediterranean Sea without battle. The scouts quickly informed Admiral Nelson, who manoeuvred his fleet of 27 ships to engage the enemy off the Spanish coast of the Cape of Trafalgar. Nelson's battle plan was a relatively simple one. Closing quickly on the enemy, part their battle line into three pieces and engage in ship-to-ship combat, whereas Villeneuve ordered his fleet to form a single line heading north, possibly with the hope of still avoiding a naval engagement. Nelson was certain that if he could pull off the first two successfully, then he would be guaranteed victory due to the superior training of his gunnery crews. Nelson divided his fleet into two columns, the first led by him on board his flagship HMS Victory and the second under Admiral Cuthbert Collingwood on the HMS The Royal Sovereign. Under inaccurate fire from the Franco-Spanish fleet, the British ships moved into position. After approximately one hour, Nelson's flagship moved alongside a pair of French ships, Bocentore and Redoubtable and let rip a monumental broadside, devastating Bocentore's stern and killing or wounding many on her gun decks. Villeneuve believed that Bocentore, his flagship, was going to be boarded by Nelson's troops. However, Nelson focused HMS Victory on Redoubtable, leaving Bocentore to HMS Neptune, Conquer and Temeraire. The fighting was fierce, with the British superior gunners causing severe death and destruction. However, the French used a tactic that Nelson refused to let his men utilise, in fear of setting the light to their own sails, which was firing down on the decks from the masts and rigging with muskets. This proved to be a very effective tactic at Trafalgar, as the French sharpshooters were able to shoot relatively unhindered. It was from a musket ball shot down from Redoubtable that Nelson was fatally injured at around an hour into the battle, with the ball severing his spinal cord and piercing his lung. The Admiral was taken below deck and made comfortable, but nothing could have been done to save the British hero. Even Nelson himself knew that he was dying, and among his last words to Captain Hardy, he asked that his mistress Lady Hamilton and bastard daughter Horatia were taken care of. Meanwhile, battle raged on, with the British ships pounding away at the Allied fleet, the French and Spanish becoming overwhelmed as the British ships entered the fray. It all became too much for the Allies, and they disengaged from battle to flee. But of this starting fleet of 33 ships, only 11 made it back to Cadiz, of which only five were deemed to be seaworthy. 22 ships of the Franco-Spanish fleet had been captured by the British. The British lost no ships, but suffered 458 killed and 1,208 wounded, from the starting strength of around 20,000 men. The French and Spanish lost 22 ships, suffered 4,395 killed, 2,541 wounded, and around 7,500 taken prisoner, from the starting strength of 35,000. Although he died, Nelson did survive long enough after being shot to learn of his victory. His last words were, God and my country. Nelson wasn't the only mortally injured leader at Trafalgar. The leader of the Spanish ships, Federico Gravino, was wounded on board his flagship by British grape shot. Though he survived the battle, he eventually succumbed to his wounds in May 1806, stating on his deathbed, I am a dying man, but I die happy. I am going. I hope to join Nelson, the greatest hero the world has produced. Villeneuve escaped the battle without injury, but after being taken prisoner by the British and released back to France in late 1805, he was found dead from supposedly six self-inflicted stab wounds to the chest. The defeat angered Napoleon, and the blame was rightly attributed to Pierre Villeneuve, who made the decision to sail out of Cadiz to seek personal glory after being informed to stay put 
and that another officer was being sent to supersede him. Trafalgar was such a disaster for the French and ended any serious threat that Napoleon posed to the Royal Navy or invading Great Britain. Although Napoleon did attempt to build a new navy, he was defeated in battle on land before his new fleet was completed. In contrast, victory at Trafalgar cemented Nelson's legacy as Britain's greatest naval leader, and many monuments, landmarks, streets and buildings have been named in honour of the battle and of the Admiral himself, most notably Trafalgar Square and Nelson's Column in London. Josh here. This was a fun one to make. Dave's favourite period in history is the Napoleonic Wars, so it is one he loved researching. I would expect to see a lot more videos on this time period. What's your favourite period in history? Let us know in the comments down below. Liking and subscribing helps us out a ton. Thank you all for watching.